This is the Wii Viewer! The Little Wii Viewer! And the Littlest Wii Viewer! And we're gonna review... Phineas and Firm Across the Second Dimension! For the Wii! So this is like a Disney cartoon show. I've never seen it before. Strangely enough, since I've watched every other cartoon that you've seen to put on, like Spongebob... You know, don't I, watch I, Disney Channel. You don't watch the Disney Channel? Not much at all. What about you, Littlest Wii Viewer? Do you watch the Disney Channel? Almost never. That's a ringing endorsement for the Disney Channel if I've ever heard it. They've really got their demographics set. Both of the, these young kids don't like the Disney Channel. Part of this game is that one or both of these characters have created a device that lets them travel to an alternate universe. And they have to stop Dr. Heinz Doofenshmidt, uh, is that right? I guess. From doing what evil plot he's come up with. Is that a bit vague? Yeah, but I really don't want to give away any plot points. They do interweave a story into this game. So if the kids like the cartoon series, they might like this story too, which is voice acted by what I'm assuming is the original cast. What do you guys think of the graphics for this one? They tried to make it cartoony as much as they could with 3D modeling. You know what this game reminded me of? What? The Simpsons game. Just the overall feel that they were kind of going for. It reminded me of the Lego series in the beginning. Then they added weird gadgets, which kind of mixed it up a lot. You're talking about like co-op play. That's what made you think of the Lego series? Co-op play, unlockable characters that you could buy and all that. But you could say that's with any game. Yeah, that's true. So Little Sweet Viewer, what do you think of the graphics? I do agree about the cartooniness in it, but it's still very good. So the controls, did you guys have any issues with the controls? How about we talk about motion controls first? Okay. There were motion controls in this game? One. It's the emergency move, where it's basically Mario's spin attack. I think the controls would be easy enough for, what's a uh, seven, eight-year-old to master? Yeah, I guess. So let's ask the seven or eight-year-old over here. Little sweet viewer, did you have an easy time with the controls? I had very easy times with the controls. Just so you know, checking your remote also revives you in multiplayer. Uh, there's a few more editions of shaking. But yeah, there's points here and there. Yeah, that's true. What did you think of the gameplay itself? The gameplay was fine. There's a few mechanics that only get used once or get overused. You know what I liked about the gameplay? The variety. Because each level had kind of a different feel. Like it's either a shooter or it's a platformer or it's a, what's it, uh, defend the castle game. That was fun. Yeah, they changed it up per level, so it wasn't just the same monotonous thing over and over again. To be fair, the defend your own castle thing is different every time. Just when you've been platforming too much, it goes into like a space shooter mode, which I thought was cool. The shooters are tedious. They take way too long. And if you die, you start the whole thing over again. Yeah, but how often do you die? That's one of the other thing we got to talk about. The game is fairly easy. Well, if you're not paying attention, you will die. Well, yeah, that's like saying if you're driving a car and looking in a different direction, you might crash it. But of course you're going to pay attention because that's what you're doing. You're playing a video game. Well, like maybe when you're fighting the spaceship boss fight when you're in the air, usually I would fire firecrackers like crazy. So you're saying there's a lot to pay attention to on the screen in the shooter mode. And I would agree with you on that. The weapons that you have to battle the enemies with were varied. From baseball shooters to guns that will pick up items to the slime gun used in Ghostbusters 2. Okay, maybe it's not that, but if you've seen that movie, you know what I'm talking about. All the weapons are upgradable, so there is some strategy on how and when you upgrade your weapons. Plus, the weapons that you use will level up on their own, so you're going to want to use all the weapons equally if you want to get the best options for the guns. So let's uh, talk about the multiplayer. What do you guys think of it? It's nothing too spectacular. It's just another character that could do exactly the same thing. Yeah, but you can actually select different characters that have different extra attributes. Like healing, more powerful spin attacks. Lastly, let's talk about the mini games that are in this collection. The whole whopping two of them. <laughs> yes, two of them. There was a claw game mini game and a ski ball mini game. Which one was your favorite, little sweet viewer? Ski ball. It gets me a lot of tickets real fast. How about you, little wee viewer? The crane machine, because it has a collectible prize. Are you pretty good at it? Uh, once you get the timing down right, yes. I just wish they had more mini games to play. I can't believe I'm saying that. Usually there's like four or five. There's only two in this one. Or something like a challenge room as a mini game. All right, Flinny, you say it. Phineas and Firm. What he said. Little wee viewer, would you buy, rent, or skip? I would have to say a rent, and if it comes around $10, $15, I would buy it. Since it has, like, 
little content. Some of the worlds are as little as two levels in a very easy boss fight. How long did it take you to beat this game? It took about three or four hours. Little Italy viewer, would you buy, rent, or skip? Rent. It doesn't have very much content. Even the mini games aren't worth playing. So the mini games weren't fun enough to make you come back to this game? Yeah. Especially what you can get from them. I mean, it's just extra characters that can help you in, in levels, but you might already have beaten the game by then. So it's basically just to unlock stuff to play these two little mini games. So you think you should only rent it for that reason? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're both right. I actually had a lot of fun playing this one. And I this is from someone who's never even seen the TV show. And that's kind of a hard thing to do, to get someone sucked into a game with no idea what they're playing. The overall feel of the title while I was playing it made me want to keep playing the game. But the title is very short, at a three to four hour window. So that'd be a perfect thing for a rental. 